Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. What does a father of three kids, five kids, two kids have to say about what's going on in the world today in parenting? We'll find out in three, two, kick it! All right, welcome to another episode of Hard Headed. I'm your host, Matt Amos. With me, as always, Chet Sears and Troy Trussell. Today, we've got what's on Chet's mind. We've got our top three hostess snacks. And Troy is going to close it out with a good word. So to kick it off, Chet. Hostess snacks. What, what is on your mind? So I've been, uh, as you heard last week, I've been doing a lot of travel uh, this year. Most all, all of my travel in the last uh, year and a half, two years has been international. So um, long flights, sometimes long layovers, and lots of people interaction in different cultures. And I've, I've become aware of additional pet peeves than the normal travel stuff you have to deal with. And I've got a few. And some of them are brand new, which is kind of funny. So a couple trips ago, I was in India. And I had a flight. My flight out of India was at like 1 a.m. Just some crazy time. And happened to be in zone one. And most all of these, you know, especially for the big planes, they've got lines like markers, zone one line up here, zone two line up here. Mm -hmm. And so I get there and there's a few people like there's a line, but like three people, three or four people. And it's in between the zone one and the zone two marker. So I get there and, you know, the common man would just get in line and conform. Right. You're just like, ah, but then I'm like, there's two supposed to be two lines here. Maybe they're all zone one. Maybe they're all zone two. Maybe they're zone one and two. So I get there and I said, Hey guys, you, what zone are you in? And they're like zone two. And I said, Oh, okay. Well I'm zone one. Let me get to your right. So I move over and go stand in zone one. Happened to be the only person in zone one at the time. <laughs> well, um, as the minutes pass on, I look behind me. And, you know, there's 20, 30 people behind me, you know, 50 people behind zone two and the, the other zones hadn't even lined up yet. They do a pretty good job on this international travel that not everybody does the gate lice thing where they all swarm around. They, they pretty much stick to, we know zone one and two are going to go pretty quick. Cause that's, you know, your first in business or economy plus, and then everything else is, you know, just general. Can you economy. explain, uh, would you say gate lice? Yeah, that's, that's the terminology used for the people that just stand in the way, even though they know they're not going to get on. <laughs> it's called gate lice. Have you, have you, you've been walking through an airport and like you just walking through trying to get from point A to point B and there's a flight that's about to board and like there's 150 people standing in the aisle, but yeah. none of them are getting on. <clears throat> yeah. I, I refer to them as gate lice. Is that your term you came up with? No, nah, one of the accounts I follow on Instagram is like called <laughs> passenger shaming oh, where they like post videos of <laughs> bad behavior and they refer to these people as gate lice. Okay. That's, that's and I've adopted yeah, it. It's that's great. Good. I like it. Yeah. And if you ever want to see like a video of somebody clipping their toenails on an airplane, that's the, that's the account to follow. <laughs> that's disgusting. Yeah, it is gross. There's some all kinds of nasty stuff. Um, but anyway, as w you know, they let the uh, the people that need assistance get on board. And so they're about to call zone one. One of the dudes that was, the, it was, he was the first in line in zone two that was trying to shade over to the zone one side. And just your typical guy, je tight jeans and loafers, mid to late 50s, slick back gelled hair, some business whatever guy. He's like, hey, man. I'd really appreciate it if I could get in front of you because I'm diamond. Like diamond status yeah. with Delta. Yeah. And I was like, whatever, man. Like, really? <laughs> but I just, I just said it like, yeah, whatever. Because like, we're all getting on the airplane. <laughs> you have assigned seats. And with the international flights, the benefit is that you don't have to worry about room for your overhead stuff. Like, it's it's there. They've got it. Like he, he wanted, so he wanted covered. on in front of you and you were the first in line basically on the one on the yeah but it, he's sitting in the same cabin i'm sitting in right 
you, but, <laughs> and even if he wouldn't have said, he's like, man, it'd be really nice if I was first on the airplane. That's fine. But to throw out the, I'm platinum, you know, I'm like, dude, who cares? Like, <laughs> I oh, pay extra how dare, this. how dare I be platinum and be in zone two? Like, you know, whatever. I'm like, what a dork. <laughs> and then, and so what I have done, much like a road rage deal, I don't rage at these folks. You just do this. I don't, I don't <laughs> thumbs, thumbs down. down. You just give them a thumbs down. But it's like, a, I really appreciate if I, you know, get in front of because I'm, I'm diamond uh, uh, 10 K. I kind of laugh like, um, can I get in front of you? I'm diamond. I'm like, ha, okay. Like, sure. <laughs> oh, if that means that much to you. Um, so another one with people, and this is kind of the same mentality. If that dude that's like, I got to get on first. If they're in an aisle seat, that makes me mad. Because when oh, you... Oh, yeah. Because then you got to climb over people. You got to get out and oh, yeah, let them and in. Mo- the smaller airplanes, there's just no climbing over. They got to get out. Well, I've frequently run into, and these are on the domestic flights that connect me to my international flights. People, I, I'm up front. I'm, I'm in one of the main groups, you know, the, the first groups to load. I'm not always just trying to get up there in front. Sometimes I happen to be just because I'm tired of sitting around. But if and, you and you become the gate lice, not if there, <laughs> no, if there's a line, there, if there's like a marker, I go stand on that. That's where they want you. I don't stand in the. But you're standing way. there 20 minutes before your flight. Nah, no, nah, never 20 just, minutes. Just because you're tired of sitting. Never 20 minutes. Anyway, line lice. If you if you are in an aisle seat and nobody inside of you is there yet, do not buckle your seatbelt. That's the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> but there's people that do that. They get there and sit in an aisle seat and buckle up and get their stuff out. And you're like the third person on the airplane. There's somebody that's going to have to get in. And then when you're like, you're like, hey, bud, that's me. I'm right there. They're like, and I gotta unbuckle now. I'm like, dude, you buckled yourself. <laughs> right. Like this is the dumbest thing. <laughs> so that's one that, that uh, frust me frustrates me. And then I had another one, uh, a first. So animals on airplanes, Matt. I'm not picking on you. Um, the coolest why animal. Would, uh, why? Why would you automatically go to picking on me? Well, you you of all the people that I know, you're the only person I know that's flown with an animal. I've I, I've flown with a dog twice. Yeah. So. My okay. service dog. That's twice. what I'm telling you. Okay. I'm about to say something about animals, and this isn't about you. But it's not like a normal thing for me to do. I don't like traveling. Of all the people I, don't I know. like traveling with an animal. <laughs> of all the people I know, you're the only one. Okay. Okay. For the record, I don't think his feelings are going to get hurt regardless. True. So one time, this is years ago, I happened to be sitting on an airplane, and a dude had a pet carrier thing. And I, I didn't even pay attention when, when he sat down. I didn't even know. And then, like, we're taxiing, and I, I hear a noise. And I, I look down, and it's a pet carrier. And, and I s- heard the noise again. I was like, that's not, that's not normal. And I was like, dude, what you got in the bag? And he's like, snow leopard. I'm like, no way. And then he was dressed like Jack Hanna, and he was from Tanganyika. And they were they uh, had some snow leopard kittens, and he was flying it to the Columbus Zoo where Jack Hanna was, and because they have some kind of partnership. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me! And then he's like, oh yeah, check this out. So he he pulled the bag out, opened it up. I got to reach over there and pet a snow leopard cub. That's cool. Like animals on airplanes, cool part. <laughs> <laughs> Just last month, I had a, an elderly lady, uh, you know, sixties, seventies. Um, Chihuahua. She aisle seat buckled up and she gave me the, I don't want to get out. Like I'm going to have to crawl over her in an inappropriate way. This was a regional jet. Like, and I'm like, ma'am, I'm not stepping over you. And then she had a dog in the floor too. Like in a, in one of the little, the deals lid unzipped the top of it open. And, uh, so she got up and put the dog under the seat so I wouldn't step on it and kill it. It's a small <laughs> one. And then I get in, and I think she was expecting like anybody to be like, oh, look at the cute little dog. And I was looking at it like, you probably should zip that thing up because this dog could just 
get out, you know. But I just don't say anything. Well, <laughs> that dog got nervous when we started taking off and started passing some stinky gas. It was horrible. Horrible. And look, you got to get that digestive issue worked out before you start flying with dogs. That's all I got to say. Because not everybody on the airplane knows that she's got a dog there and they got to smell that stuff too. You know, <laughs> it was bad. And the dog got out of the, the thing naturally. She's asleep and the dog's out walking around. <laughs> and I'm like, this is, this is not a good situation. And then the dog ended up laying next to the bag and like taking a nap. She woke up and was like, Hey, get back in the thing. And he got in the thing, but she never zipped it up. And so, I had it just frustrated me, especially the stinky gas. Um, so this other guy, this this is India trip as well. I spend a lot of time in airport lounges now, and I'm not fond of them, but it's better than you know sitting at the gate or at a Chili's for you know six hours. This dude, like, there's a seat, and he wanted to sit in that seat, so he's walking, and he's like, okay, I'll sit there. And just leaves his bag in the walking area of the lounge and then goes back in there and sits in that seat. He just left it. Just left in it? In the way. And people are walking in like, oh, is this your bag? I'm like, that's not mine. That's his. Oh. <laughs> it's that guy's. Yes. And I'm like, dude, like, clean up around yourself. Don't don't leave a big wake. You should You should not impact people this way. And then I've also found... <laughs> A difference between uh, first or business class international travelers versus first or business, first class domestic travelers. Huge difference. And the more annoying people are the first class domestic travelers. Like they have this sense of entitlement and everything has to be just its own way. And I don't have to zip up my dog in their dog carrier because I'm first class and and then you get on these international flights and everybody's down to earth. They're very polite. I saw, I was on a, a ANA, a, the Japanese airline. And there was this dude that something happened and the flight attendant, there, there's a lot of bowing in Japan and the flight at every time, you know, they're going to come and take your order for your meal. And they're like, uh, you know, Hey, you know, what are you going to eat? And I was like, Oh, the such and such. Oh, you know, very good. And she, she would bow like three times. Oh yeah. yeah yes. Okay. Like, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. You know, just all kinds of stuff. Well, this dude and this flight attendant, there's something happened. It was like a not a good, like, hey, something happened. And food order was wrong or he ordered a drink and they didn't have it. Something. And she is like apologizing. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. And they spent 30 seconds bowing back and forth to each other, like <laughs> apologizing and saying no problem, whatever. Like just so polite and wholesome and the, the flight <laughs> attendants aren't worn out and frustrated with all the idiots that are, uh, you know, that you have to deal with on these domestic flights. It's so much better. Um, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, the if you look at the, like, the dude, I've been on a couple of the domestic flights and somebody will go to get in a seat and like, whose bag is this? Whose bag is this? And it's over my seat. Who's, let's move this bag. I don't have room for my bag. Like, eh, it's kind of first come, first serve there, buddy. You're going to have to deal with it, you know. And you don't get any of that on the international flights, uh, the, the business class. So if you have uh, an opportunity, it just seems like domestic first class, they feel like they're experts and they're superior than everybody. And then the more expensive tickets, those people are more easygoing and go along to get along kind of thing. Um, I had this one, and so – I go through a lot of customs, like, you know, the government stuff of the countries I travel to. You got to be on your game. Uh, first of all, it's like no phone policy just about every country. The, even in the U.S., when you're going through customs, you're not allowed to be on your phone, take pictures, do anything like that. And um, But this dude the other day, and I think this is like an epidemic with the headphones in general, like everybody walking around with earbuds in. But, you know, you get this line of folks like – a whole flight comes in and you've got four or five of these gate agent, you know, customs people, but you have one entry point into that. So you have to pay attention, like where you go, like you wait until the next one frees up, but it may be 30 feet down the way. And we're all there backed up in this line 
and the gate agent, the customs person, like had somebody to go, and they're like, "Next, next, next," and the dude just like <laughs> sitting there, like bopping around, <laughs> and he's had got his headphones in. He can't even hear, and they're they're over there, like over. Oh, Hey, dude, like over here. <laughs> Waving at him. <laughs> and he's just like, ba-dip, ba-dip, ba-dip. and they had to get out and walk down there like, hey. And he's like, what? And they're like, go this way, you know? Oh, and then he like peels his headphones out. Why didn't somebody behind him just like say, hey. I don't touch people. Like, I don't, I don't do that. I wasn't the one behind him, but. I'd like, hey, on the shoulder. Yeah, it didn't happen. But that dude's an idiot. And there's all kinds of people that are idiots that just <laughs> have their headphones in all the time and they don't know what's going on. I work with one of them. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Listening to... Uh, hey. Hey. He's yeah. listening hey. to books, though. Audio books. Hey. You got you got a patient. Hey. Hey. Huh? What? Huh? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Waste my time. <laughs> So, uh, oh man, there is something I love about Japan, and they're uh, they're very particular about their public transport transportation in Japan, and one of their cultural, societal behaviors rules, if you will, it's not like a law, but you are to not disturb anyone around you, and during this public transportation, so. I had this uh, this trip that I was on. I flew into a specific Tokyo airport, but I flew out of a different Tokyo airport. Hour and a half away. So I'd take this shuttle bus that goes between the two. And they tell you, and they, they have it in Japanese and English, uh, audio recording of, you know, the typical big tour bus type deals. And it's like, yeah, you know, welcome to whatever shuttle bus. Well, it takes about an hour and a half to get there. Um, please know that you, you know, don't eat food on this thing. Uh, take all your trash with you. Uh, do not talk on your phone. Like don't talk on your phone. Uh, do not use, uh, electronic devices on your, your, your phone. You, you know, this, this is don't talk out loud, you know, that kind of thing. And it's a pleasant, like you just get on the bus and you sit down and it's just quiet. It's, it's very pleasant. Well, this, uh, my last trip, there's this American family, and I'm beginning to understand why a lot of people don't like Americans on, on the on the international scale. But they get on, and they've got this like five year old kid, and they hand him a iPad, and he starts watching some cartoon with no headphones, and he's like six rows behind me, and the driver, the Japanese driver, he could speak English and Japanese, but instead of just flat out saying, hey, family with the kid with the loud video, shut that thing down. You're disturbing the whole bus, and that's not cool in Japan. Um, he goes through his uh, welcome spiel. Like, you know, welcome, da da da, da. Please refrain from using your cell phones, da da da, da. Says it in Japanese. <laughs> it says it in English. Do you think that's... All he knows in English. It could be. It could be. <laughs> That's why he didn't like. Finish. But he says it, and it takes him about forty-five seconds to get through the the deal. Yeah, and the family doesn't. They don't get it because it's like re- refrain from using your cell phone. Yeah. It's important to be quiet around your passengers. Don't you know? Blah blah blah. And they're just you know. Bye bye. And he's like, hey, dad. Ah. You know, just extremely loud. So then the bus driver like pauses 30 seconds. Boom. Say the whole thing over again. Oh, no. Pauses 30 seconds. Says the whole thing over again. 10 minutes of me hearing the video and then the bus driver over the loudspeaker. <laughs> and I'm about to lose it and ha- get up and go back and say, hey, family, they're talking to you. Uh, but apparently somebody else got to it. I was up towards the front of the bus, so I couldn't see what was going on. But um, they got somebody got a hold of him and like shut that down. And then a little bit later, he's like, "Oh look, Dad!" And they're like, "Shh, shh!" <laughs> they're like trying to shut him up, which they've never apparently done in their life before. Yeah. But 
I thought that was pretty cool. The the just do not disturb. Don't be disturbing to the people around you. But then they got really disturbing when they just kept saying over and over and over, you shouldn't be doing this over and over and over and over again. And I was about to tell the driver, he at least be you be quiet. I mean, you're you're causing some problems here too. <laughs> but anyway, oh, man, man, that that's what's been uh that's what's been going on in my mind. All the crazy traveling air travel pet peeves recently and pet pet peeves i like yes i like that i like your shirt matt thanks that's a sweet shirt don't sauce my meat don't sauce. you get that at hardheadedpodcast.com you can merch that's where i got it yeah that's where other people can buy it and it's soft good you get one of the three threaded whatever you call it soft yeah, the the expensive one. Yeah, it's really soft. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's worth the extra dough. It is a couple bucks even. Yeah, I think is all it is. Not bad. Yeah. All right. Nice shirt. All right. Well, I hope you're hungry. I am hungry. Let's get some snacks. We're gonna start. So in the next couple of episodes, we're doing hostess snacks this time, and we're, we're gonna do little Debbie snacks later. Troy. What you got, man? That's what I was getting ready to say, but you, oh, okay. uh, you've taken my job. I'm going to go with my number three. I actually brought all my my top three. Okay. I, all right. I'm excited. Yeah. Top three hostess snacks. Number three, the yellow cupcakes. Actually, this is orange flavor. Have they always been orange flavor? I'll be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't even know that existed. I thought they had. I thought they were like lemon flavor. They come in a box. Yeah, dude. I used to eat these all the time when I was a kid. Yeah. And still, occasionally get them. Do you, Do you mind? Even though I shouldn't. No, here, break them up. That's number three. Number orange cupcakes. Number two. Powdered donuts. Those are the donuts. 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 That's right. Okay, the powdered. The powdered. I don't like the chocolate ones. My kids will get a bag of those chocolate ones and down it quickly. But, yeah. Number two. Did, uh, so if those are your favorite, why don't you go ahead and have that? I've never had that. Well, these are all three my favorite. Number one. Well, there's only two of these is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. That's I, cause I will smoke all of those <laughs> powdered donuts. Go for it. And number one, that's not that bad. Oh, uh, they're pretty good. Twinkies. Really? They're my favorite. And I got two of these earlier and already ate them. So y'all could split the Twinkies too. <laughs> you were just a fat boy today. I was. Twinkies. Uh, they're a little moist. You have condensation on the inside of the bag here. Huh. Well, the other bag had con- condensation. 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 You remember that Family Guy episode? Condensation. Don't you don't know. remember that? No. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah, so those are my top three. Who's next? Matt. Trying not to chew into the microphone. You're going to have to get a drink or something. Those things will make you all... I'm leaning away for sure. <laughs> Number three, ding-dongs. Mm. And I, I don't even one. know if they still come in the original aluminum foil. They do not. They do um, not. I haven't had a ding-dong in so long, but... They come Ash, in plastic. Ashley and I were shopping um, about a month, month ago, two months ago. And we're like, man, we never buy junk food like this and she was like i think it's been like 20 years since i've had a ding dong and i was like you want to you want to get some because our kids probably never even had one and she's like yeah yeah so we get them no aluminum foil tastes different and they do and um i put them in the freezer like the, the, the most all of these snack cakes are better out of the freezer are better cold have like, you ever had a fried twinkie yes yeah me too i've fried twinkies it does, it's not right. It's it felt yeah. illegal. They're so good. Um, 
I'm with you though on the ding dongs. Slamma ding dong. Matt, what's your number? Dose. He's trying to look up to make sure it's not little Debbie. No, no, no. Uh, number two, <laughs> ho hos. Is that the like the Swiss roll? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. My it's, kids it's basically love like the, the... it's basically like the uh, Twinkie, but it's chocolate, and then uh, it's got the uh, it's cylindrical, kind of like that, but it's got the fudge the chocolate coating on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. But the white swirl when you bite into it. It's kind of like the same ingredients that go into a ding dong, except it's like a roll in a different form. Yep. Yeah. But the chocolate, the best part of the ding dong is, you know, have that, that square edge and how it's like real, especially if it's been in the it, freezer. It's a little thicker. Oh, man. Yep. I We're like on the it. same page. We're on the same page. And number one is the cupcakes, but the chocolate cupcake. So basically, mm. again, the exact same thing, just with the frosting on top and the little white swirl. So not a bad, not a bad top three for both of you guys. I go, I'm going in a different direction, though. Number three, the blueberry mini muffins. Yeah, they come in like a pack of four. Yeah, you get like four or five of them in a little. Man, that's good stuff. Um, Yeah, those are good. Those are good in the hunting duck duck blind. Number two, all these are because they don't freeze. Like that, that's the, you like bring a granola bar, you're going to break your teeth. The uh, number two, coffee cakes. Have you ever had the. The coffee cakes, it's just like pure yes. sugar and cinnamon. Yep. It's so have. good. They're really good. And then number one, the chocolate donut. And oh, yeah. This is one of those scenarios that is far better on the hostess side than on the Little Debbie side. Like Little Debbie's chocolate donuts. I don't know if it's the same with the powdered. The hostess has got the small donut game figured they, out. They got, they yeah. got little Debbie beat. Like I sometimes, because so the chocolate donuts are my uh, that and a yoo-hoo is what I eat at breakfast whenever I go to Lake Fort, like you know fishing trip. Like that's the great, that's the big breakfast. But I'll I'll almost pass if they don't have the hostess. Like it's not even worth it. Not yeah. worth the calories. Yeah, I feel like my little Debbie is stuff that you don't necessarily bake, but all my host of stuff is things you would bake. You know? Okay. Or fry. Deep fry. <laughs> or deep fry. God, we are fat. Anything that has uh <laughs> anything that has that little cardboard thing to help support it, you know. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, here. Good. I'll take your trash. You need a napkin? I've got a napkin. I've got napkin. I got pants. Okay. I'm a man. So what jeans are for. The uh, <laughs> it's a it's amazing these white powder donuts made this root beer taste like it's absolutely got no sugar in it whatsoever. <laughs> Speaking of pants and fat, yes, it does it does do that. There's this holster company that's been showing up in my uh, my social media feed, and uh, the dude that's like pimping the product out there wears these inappropriately tight pants. They're like tactical pants. But they are way too tight. And I noticed. You could see his Twinkie. No. Oh. But <laughs> most of the comments are not about the his holster. Ding dong. <laughs> uh, you see his ho ho. Maybe, <laughs> maybe his <laughs> done that. My top three but, is uh, all. That's weird. Anyway, uh, a lot of people started commenting, you know, nice pants or, you know, like sarcastically. And then I remembered that uh, the Jimmy Fallon skit. With uh, Will Ferrell, everybody's talking about my tight pants. I got my tight pants. He did it with. I uh, got my tight pants on. He did it with J Lo too. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, cracks me up. I found the GIF and I, <laughs> I'm like, dude, I'm lighting this guy up. So I, I, I put the GIF of everybody's talking about my tight pants. It cracks me up. I probably laugh at it harder than anybody else <laughs> on the internet, but I've gotten some likes to that that comment. <clears throat> but since I commented on it. I get more of their ads in my feed. So now you see more of his tight pants. Unfortunately. Yeah. I've been doing that. We Not to, interested. We used to have a lab tech that came in with excessively tight pants. And that's how he would, uh, We every day, that's what Steve would do. <laughs> Steve would come in and he'd sing, he'd start singing that song every time he'd see him. Everybody's talking about my tight pants. <laughs> Got my tight pants on. That's hilarious. That's good. 
All right. Oh, I need something to drink. <laughs> you just had something to drink, and then you set your ding dong back on top of it. That's a Twinkie. Oh, or a Twinkie. A Twinkie. <laughs> All right, y'all ready for the good word? You know what we ought to do? We're almost ready. Um, whatever operation that we're going to have, you know, operation something Twinkie, something ding dong. We put a color. You got to have an adjective, right? Like Operation Wed, Red Wing? Uh, the Marine Corps as a whole, uh, Operation Green Ding Dong. <laughs> what? What is that? It's just a, a whole Marine Corps thing, the Green Weenie, because it's going to F you. That's the whole thing. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, I think if, <laughs> based on us, or whatever operation we have is going to be some kind of a hostess or a little Debbie operation. <laughs> Okay, I guess we better go to a good word now because that that's not well, Operation well, no. Yellow Twinkie. Well, no, a fried no. Twinkie. Like fried Twinkie, would be good. Yellow fried Twinkie. No, just fried Twinkie. Oh, you don't need too many descriptive words. Or what's the uh, orange cupcake? <laughs> I don't know. Operation. Maybe that's what Matt calls Donald Trump. Orange cupcake. Yeah, it's fitting. I think that'd be most of his followers. Bunch yeah. of cupcakes. <laughs> and that goes for both sides. I mean, <laughs> oh, is it? Why am I so thirsty? Does sugar make you thirsty? Yes. That. Uh, what did I eat before the the orange thing made the Twinkie not taste as good? Because you already had different sugar. It was way more know, way more sugar content in that cupcake than the Twinkie. Yeah. yeah, with the with you got to you got to start with the everything. least sugar, go to the most, so you're building, not going from top, because then it's going to taste like oh, this thing's just preserved bread. I'm about to, I'm going to end up with diabetes, <laughs> and Wilford Brimley. Okay, sorry, Troy. <clears throat> All right, the good word is taste and see. So in Psalms or Psalm, I definitely just tasted. So let's see if the that's see right. is good. Psalm 34, 8, David is writing Psalm 34, and he says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And then so I noticed in my Bible it has at the top of uh, Psalm 34, it says, Of David when he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and he went away. And so that made me turn to 1 Samuel 21, and in 1 Samuel 21, if you'll remember, or if you know the story, that's where uh, David had a few men with him, and uh, he goes to Nob, to Ahimelech, which is not actually Abimelech. Ahimelech is the priest, and he's the priest that gives David and his the people that are with him the holy bread because they were hungry. And so David gets the holy be- bread from him, and then he asks, David asks Ahimelech, uh, then have you not here a spear or a sword at hand? And he does. He, he actually has the sword of Goliath there. And so <clears throat> Ahimelech ends up giving him the sword of Goliath and b- before he flees again uh, to Gath. But I thought it was pretty cool. I was reading a commentary about, about this passage and the two things that we could – observe concerning the sword and why he was allowed to get the sword of Goliath, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, <clears throat> one thought is maybe that God had graciously given it to him <clears throat> as a pledge of his singular favor uh, that David had or that God had for David. And so that whenever he drew it or whenever he looked upon it, it would be a great support to his faith by bringing to mind the great instance of the particular care and countenance of the divine providence, providence respecting him. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. And then also that he had gratefully given it back to God, dedicating it to him and to his honor as a token of his thankfulness for, you know, being with him when he defeated Goliath. And it's actually the same sword that he chopped its head off with. So, I, I'll tell you, it's a, that's a pretty pretty powerful move 
to cut a dude's head off with that dude's sword, his own sword. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I love it. <clears throat> and so he got to, to take the sword away from here. Um, and so then after he gets the sword, he goes to the land of the Philistines uh, where he was hoping to be hidden and to remain undiscovered because this is when Saul's, Saul is trying to capture him. Uh, well, he ends up in the land or in the camp of Achish, and he's the king of Gath. And uh, it said in Psalm 34, therefore... He therefore drove him away, uh, which is in that title of Psalm 34. But I got to reading it, and I was like, "Why? Well, I, I want to know how he wanted to, how he got driven away." But I thought it was interesting. So he flees to Gath, and then he becomes scared that the king's going to do something to him and his men. Um, and so, let's see, where is it? In chapter, or sorry, verse 13. It says, so he changed his behavior before them and pretended to be insane in their hands and made marks on the doors of the gate and let his spittle run down his beard. Then Akish said to his servants, behold, you see the man is mad. Why then have you brought him to me? Do I lack, do I lack mad men that you have brought this fellow to, to behave as a madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? And so he sends him away. And, uh, this one commentary about the the behavior that uh, that David changed his behavior, but he didn't change his mind or his spirit in the way he uh, worships the Lord, which is pretty cool. So how does he say it? Uh, so he penned the psalm, Psalm 34, after this, and it shows that he did not change his spirit when he changed his behavior. But even in the greatest difficulties and hurries, his heart was fixed, trusting in the Lord. And he concludes that psalm with this assurance that none of those that trust in God shall be desolate, though they may be, as he now was, solitary and distressed, persecuted, but not forsaken. And so I thought that was, I thought that was really interesting, the behavior that he did or that he showed when he was fearful of a king. Well, I, I think it, it's kind of a total surrender. He's not defending himself. So if dude could have been just like, yeah, I don't care. And, you know, whacked him. Yeah. But, uh, and there's no way to defend yourself in this case, right? He's just, that's, we'll see. This is my way out and I'm going to behave this way. And it's kind of in God's hands, you know, yeah, and it's interesting. It didn't really say where he came up with the idea of acting that way, or if he or if he came up with it, or if it was told to him, or yeah, yeah. I, I, I maybe just quick thinking on the spot. Yeah, but two good psalms came out of that. Um, psalm thirty four and Psalm fifty five. He also wrote after that encounter. So, yeah. Verse 8, Psalm 34, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Love it. That's a good word. Thank you, Troy. You bet. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.